Let's get out our chant and see how we do with the Guru Stoke. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Reva Param Brahma, Asmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Chinmayam yapyat sarvam trilokyam sacharacharam atpadam darshitam yena asmai shri gurave namaha tvameva martha chapita tvameva Vameva Bandhu Shasaka Vameva Vameva Vedya Pravidam Vameva Vameva Sarvam Mamadeva Deva Vameva Sarvam Mamadeva Jai Guru. Jai Guru means victory to the teacher. Now let's uh, see if we can learn our uh, Shanti Mantra the, from the Upanishads. And I'll chant the first line and then you repeat it after me. Om Sahana Vavatu. Did you get it? Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahabiryam Karavavahai, Sahabiryam Karavavahai, He Jasvi Navadhita Mastu, E jasvi navadhi tamastu ma vidvi shavahai ma vidvi shavahai Om shanti 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 Om shanti 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 Let's try it all together. Om Sahana Bhattu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karabhavahai, Tejasvina Bhagita Mastuma Vidvishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And then the last three Shantis we always do, we all end that way. So Shanti means peace. We want peace from external distractions and problems, hurricanes, earthquakes, etc. Peace from any physical agitation, if I'm sick or I have an injury or something like that. And then also peace from any interior agitations, if I'm anxious or upset or my feelings are hurt, et cetera. So the subject that we've been working on is adhyasa, super imposition. <clears throat> And last week, Shankara was using one of the many metaphors of the silver and the mother of pearl. And let's review why he's talking about this. So we clearly understand what the problem is. 
My problem is I do not know who I am. And then I subsequently, subsequently have all sorts of deeply rooted ideas of identity. Once I'm in that state, that's where all the problems happen. Now, um, who are you? Wendy and I were talking before class. She's doing some shadow work with, with uh, another teacher. And my suggestion is, you know, set the Vedanta aside. If you want to work on some psychological stuff, do that within the context, the frame of whatever that teacher's teaching. Or Pamela had talked a couple weeks ago about, well, what about people who are deeply devoted to worshiping a form of a God? And that's very real for them. And it is real. Or you're invoking the Divine Mother. You want to turn your will and your life over to the care of the Mother. That's incredibly valuable. And it will not free you. All it will do is make the funny farm of this world a little less miserable. Because the cause of my suffering is the non-apprehension of who I am. Of India, ignorance. And what we have is a two-fold process. I go to sleep spiritually. In my mind, I have the non-apprehension of my essential nature. Then my mind projects a dream in the waking state. That dream has three elements. The first, jiva bhavana, the feeling, the attitude that I'm a person, asmita, egoism, ahankara, the ego sense, meaning I feel like I'm a person. I'm Jim, I'm Wendy, I'm Shweta. That's who I am. Almost always, it means I'm identified with my body or my body plus the personality. I may think I'm the transmigrating soul. I'm gonna leave this body and then I'm gonna to go to some other place and then incarnate into another body. That is a relative reality, just like this physical body is a relative reality. Someone gets COVID, they may end up with chronic heart disease. That's a relative reality. <clears throat> but we're talking about what's ultimate and what's real, finding out who I am. So the dream starts with this personal sense of self. Then the Buddhists have a wonderful way of talking about what happens. They call it dependent origination. Do they talk about that in your... Not in this one, no. Yeah. So the individual knower of the world and the phenomenal world as separate from me, joy giving and misery producing arise together. And also a third element. The technical term is called kartavya means obligatory action. What it means for us is the struggler. I'll be happy when. It'll be better if. More better different. I need to get a partner. I need to get rid of a partner. I need a better job. I need to get rid of my job. I need a bigger house. I need to get rid of my house. 
I need to be taller. I need to be thinner. I need whatever it is. I'll be happy when it'll be better if. Because that feeling of jiva bhavana, that I feel like a person, inherently <clears throat> has a sense of discontent, of incompleteness. It's a spiritual impoverishment. You oftentimes hear that we have a God-shaped hole in our hearts. And I put drugs, I put food, I put gambling, I put money, I put sex, I put all these things in there. The uh, approval of other people wanting to be acknowledged. But it, 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 it's at best temporary. It's always laced with sorrow, with deep suffering. That's my problem. And what Shankar is saying is the root of it is spiritual ignorance. Just like at night, we get a kind of a mini experience of it. What do I do at night? I go to sleep. That is the non-apprehension of myself being awake. And you are the god of your dream. You go, Patroo! Do the dream state. And in the dream state, you have the same triple factor. I have a dream body, which is my locus of perception. I peep out at the dream world from it. And I have a dream ego identified with that dream body. And my mind's created a dream world outside and dream thoughts and feelings inside. And yoga thunders. This is no different. This is no different. So in the dream, you can try to solve the dreamer's problems. Oh, I'm in a cage. I need to get out of the cage in my dream. From that standpoint, you keep looking for the key to undo the lock. That's like going to the psychotherapist. That's like going to energy work. Within the world of the dream, it's very valid. But what happens when you wake up? God. So this egoism and the world that's created from it is light. The silver and the mother of pearl. Did we do snake in the rope last week too? Oh, no, we'll probably get to that. <clears throat> but the idea is just as the silver is in my mind, it's not there in the mother of pearl. So this sense that I'm a person is in my mind. I superimpose, I'm the body, or I'm energy, or I'm feelings, I'm thoughts. All of them fundamentally starts with uncritically. I am a person thought. Now, what is the antidote for ignorance? Knowledge. This is not information. This is direct knowing, direct experience. And this whole process of discovery is very subtle. We're not going to get anything new we're going to discover something that is so subtle, yet so here, that we miss it. Let me see if I can give you an example of, in the world of what we're doing. I think all of you have noticed there's a photograph of my teacher, Swamiji, behind me. Can you all see it? Mm -hmm. You've seen it for weeks, years. 
Now, we're going to do a process. Do you see that there's a wooden frame around the photo? Mm -hmm. You see it? Yeah. Now, do you see that there's a white mat in the mm -hmm. framing? Yeah. I should have gotten the orange, but I didn't. I got white. <laughs> now, if you look at the photo of Swamiji, he's got these 70s glasses. That's what he was wearing. But if you look very carefully toward the bottom in the middle, it's very faded now. You can see where he signed it for me. Yeah. This way. Where he signed it. Oh, he signed it. Yeah. Can you see his feta? Yes. <laughs> Had you noticed it before? Yes, I do. Ah, she's very subtle. I did not. <laughs> no, see, it was always there. But you didn't notice it. Do you get what I'm driving at? Yeah. So the self is always there. But because it's so subtle, I don't notice it. So, what did we do with the frame and the signature? We started with something that's gross, very easy to see, and we went more and more subtle. Shankara oftentimes uses this example. Do you see the tree over yonder? Oh, yes, I see the tree. Do you see that uppermost branch of the tree? Oh, yes, I see the uppermost branch of the tree. If you look towards the top, you'll see there's a leaf. It's part green and part brown at the tip. Can you see that one? Oh, yes, I do see that one. Now, if you lift your gaze 15 degrees, you will see the daytime crescent moon. Oh, yes. It's not a nighttime moon, it's a daytime moon. You know what it's like to try to see the moon at dusk? Sun's still out. It's hard to see, especially if it's just depressing. So we looked at something gross, a little more subtle, a little more subtle. We have to take that final leap. So understand all the images that Shankara gives us in this text. They do not define, they point. What are we doing? Listen to the sounds outside. You are not the sound, you're the knower of the sounds. Look at the lamp. You are not the lamp, you're the knower of the lamp. Now let's go, we can do anything in the five outer senses. Let's go to the body itself. Take a deep breath and feel the breath in the body. Do you not know the breath in the body, the sensations in the body? Just like you know the sound, it's like you know the lamp. Self, not self. Go to the realm of feeling. Sometimes I feel joy, sometimes I feel sorrow, etc. But whatever my feelings are, I am not my feelings. I'm the knower of my feelings. Same with thoughts. Whatever my thoughts are, I am not my thoughts. I am the knower of my thoughts. Now, with the attention introverted, see if you can notice who sees the thoughts. It's tricky. Because it's like trying to look at your eyes. It's like trying to taste your tongue. It's like trying to shine a flashlight on its batteries. 
you will never see yourself as an object. Yet you are not unknown. Who are you? So this is the process of direct inquiry into my self nature. All right, verse nine. Will you help us out, please? Let me. Satchetatmanya no siute nitte vishna prakalpitaha vyaktyo vividha sarva hatake katakadiva. The entire world of things and beings is only a mental projection upon the substra substratum, which is the eternal, all pervading Vishnu, whose nature is existence consciousness just as all the different ornaments are made out of the same gold. Yes, so now we're dealing with this world. This text, as most of them do, address three questions. Who am I? What's my essential nature? Question number one. Question number two, what is this world? How has it come about? So now Shankara is dealing with the second question. What is this world? And he's used the image of having seen in a moment. He used gold in the ornaments, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes he uses clay in the pots. This one was gold in the ornaments. So, I had some jewelry that had belonged to my grandfather. Some shirt studs, and cufflinks, and things like that. And I wanted to have a gold ring made out of them. So I took gold, they were broken and stuff like that. So it's good, good quality gold though. I took it to a jeweler and I said, will you melt this down and make me a ring? Really nice ring, I'll let you decide. Okay, how long will this take? About three weeks, okay. Typical, your ring is ready. I come back and opens the little box that he had and there was a beautiful silver ring wait a minute i gave you gold how did i get a silver ring from gold is that really possible by the way i made the story up. <laughs> 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 but it demonstrates what Shankar is talking about. Gold never leaves its dharma. Gold is gold. Whether it's shirt studs, cufflinks, a ring, it's gold. You melt it down, you can make more ornaments. The ladies can make bangles, jewelry, jewelry. So it is the material cause of all gold ornaments. What changes? Nama Rupa. Nama means name. It's the root where we get the English word name. Rupa means form. So when you hear Nama Rupa, means name and form. So the gold always stays the same. It's the name and the form. Bracelet, ring, necklace, shirt stud, bangle, they 
change. So what Shankara is saying is Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. All the scriptures you get this phrase, Sarvam Idam. Sarvam Idam means all this. All this. It's shop talk. It means the phenomenal world. Sarva midam kalu means verily. All this is verily Brahman. All this is verily consciousness. So, in the Semitic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the great metaphor comes from the Hebrew Psalms. You are the potter, I am the clay. God creates a world. He has a creation. And in it are creatures. And the one thing you need to know about God is you're not it. God is other, unknowable, ineffable, other. Isn't that how you were taught? Mm -hmm. What were you raised, Pamela? We yeah. like Catholic. So Saints. he was also judge. Yes. Everything we did all the day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> Hinduism, at its core, the Advaita Vedanta says that's the wrong image. Sarvam kalvidam brahma. All this is verily God. It's consciousness. Now, it's easy to understand if we go back to our old friend, the dream state. You are the God of your dream. You create the dream in the same way the infinite manifests all this. So, if you close your eyes for a minute, and I've got some corn soup there today. So let's visualize an ear of corn. I've got a, a, a ear of corn, it's white corn, and part of a husk has been taken off, and it's fresh right there from Whole Foods. You see my corn? Open your eye. Did you guys visualize an ear of corn? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you dream about an ear of corn. There is a similarity and there's a difference. The ear of corn that you just imagined is nothing but the fabric of my mind appearing as the ear of corn. There is no second substance. It is my own mind. Chaitanya, chitta, appearing as the ear of corn. But if I dream about corn, I'm having a dream that I'm in Whole Foods and all of a sudden all the mangoes turned into ears of corn. There's a difference and a similarity. Similarity is the ear of corn from my dream is also just imagination. But in the dream, I think it's real. You see that? Mm -hmm. I don't realize that it's just imagination until it's negated, is the technical term. Meaning I wake up, poof, it's gone. Oh, it seems so real. 
Have you ever had a very, very vivid dream? You wake up and did it happen or did I dream? Well, who's had dreams like that? Yeah, very hard to tell sometimes. <clears throat> but if you think, oh no, it was just a dream. It was just a vivid dream. It was my imagination. Now, the technical term for that in Sanskrit is sankalpa, S-A-N-K-A-L-P-A. It is an almost untranslatable word. It means thought, wish, will, desire, intention. The law of sankalpa, it is the process whereby something imagined appears grossified and manifested. The master Jesus talked about this. Whatsoever you ask believing, so shall you receive. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a person thinks in their heart, so are they. There's all sorts of very profound ramifications about this deep understanding that the phenomenal world is not solid, it's not created, most importantly, it's not separate from me and I'm the victim of it. By and large, our experience of the phenomenal world is nothing but the pressing out of our own deeply rooted sun called My hero, one of my heroes, Ramana Maharshi, used to use this metaphor. I'm going to have to change it pretty soon because the young people have no idea what I'm talking about. So he would use the image of a movie projector. This is before digital. The lamp in the movie projector is like the cell. The film is like my mind. The images on the film are my various sun culpa. The image on the screen is my experience of the world. So some people live in a world, oh, it's so scary out there. It's violent and people are be very afraid, be very afraid. And they think the world is creating the mind state. And yoga says, Actually, it's your mind state that's creating the world. Someone else may have deep sun culpa. I live and I move and I have my being in God. I see that it's a beneficent universe that conspires for my well being if I let it. What's the saying of Teresa of Avila? All will, all is well, all will be well. How does it go, Mike? All is well and all shall be well. Say it again slowly. All forward. is well and all shall be well. Yeah. That was her deep insight into the nature of reality. And then, of course, it then became her son called one. She lived in a different world. Than other people. 
So what a yogi wants to understand is this phenomenal world is like a hologram. It's a virtual reality. Now, this does not mean that Vedanta teaches solipsism. Solipsism is the philosophical or psychological position where I maintain the reality of my ego, my individuality, and I think I'm creating everything around me. Now it's a group effort. But we have far more freedom to change our experience of the world than we think we do. That's a corollary of what Shankar is saying. So if you spend, first of all, thank God, most people, their deeply rooted sun cult is my mind has no power. Or in the worst place that it is now. <laughs> Yogi begins to understand that thought is creative. So in the Hebrew scriptures, it says we are made in the image and likeness of God. Male and female, he created them. Well, actually, in some of the ancient metaphors, male here has nothing to do with the plumbing in your body. It means the outer objective mind. Female means the subjective receptive part of the mind. And God is consciousness and is always manifesting a phenomenal world by means of Sankhota. And we are made in the image and likeness of it. Every conscious being is to some degree contributing to the phenomenal world. So it's not God's fault that there's war, suffering, we're largely doing it to ourselves. And we can intuitively get a sense of this. If you go into untouched nature, we were talking about Yosemite. Anybody here been to Yosemite? Mm -hmm. What's it like when you're there in the beauty of nature? Pretty awesome, isn't Relaxing. it? Relaxing. And there's incredible beauty, and there's incredible harmony that you intuitively feel. We're the ones that mess it up. How? With our stupid ideas rooted in ignorance. It's also cool. So, Jim? Yes. Um, Sarva Kriyananda, and maybe you covered this at some point, talks about who is the doer, doership. Do you ever address that? Yes, but we're not going to talk about it right now. Okay, I just was curious. Yeah. Right now, for those of us who are ego identified, the root of it all, there was, there's one saying from the old Course in Miracles I love. I'm frightened because I see a meaningless universe. I see a meaningless universe because I'm in competition with God. So if I don't realize all is well, all shall be well. Or as Meher Baba used to say, don't worry, be happy. If instead, God's an underachiever. She's obviously not doing it my way, which is how most of us approach our lives. Then we create this phony doer. And we start to muck it up. 
what Gita says, the doer is guna and karma, the qualities of our mind and the force of the past. Ultimately, we find God is the doer. But we have to realize that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, back to the material cause of the phenomenal world. Sarvam kalvidam brahma. All this is verily brahma. I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to get upset. I don't need to push the river downstream. I don't need to get out my sword and try to do battle with the waves. And as I change my attitude, the world appears to change. Any thoughts on this? So Jim, is the Sankofa kind of like our personalities and our thoughts? That well, it's largely unconscious for most of us. Okay. But it's your intentions. It's the, it, it's the way you see the world. So you may have the opinion, oh, God's in charge. But if you walk out the front door and your heart is filled with fear and you're resentful because of the, the stuff people have done to you, and, uh, you're angry and upset at how unfair people are, then you'll begin to see that world. So is that kind of built in and I have the right language for it, but is it kind of our karma of what from our past experiences and, and this experience? That's exactly where it comes from. It is it is from the past. But we can change it then? Of course we, you can. Oh, we can, okay. Of course you can. So for example, you know, I'm very involved in the 12-step recovery community. Mm -hmm. And I can remember uh, it was Easter season. And a person says, Jim, do you believe in the resurrection? I said, of course I do. I see it on a daily basis in the rooms of AA. <laughs> what else is it? But these radical psychic shifts that people have. It's not just not drinking anymore. They have a spiritual experience. And all of a sudden, they see the world differently. And they're able to do and think and feel and believe what they could not before. Is that making sense? It, it does. Jim, in the, in the AA, isn't it their first premise to hand it over to God? That's not the first premise. Okay, I've never been in premise. A, yeah. a premise. Yeah, it is one of the premises. So isn't there, I kind of think that there's some element of surrender and acceptance in all of this. It's Absolutely. It's not egoic, I will do this now. It's Absolutely. more Absolutely. accepting Absolutely. you're not in control. And and the what Shankara is saying is the point is there's nothing wrong out there. Right. One of the things Shankara will also say, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. Brahman alone is real. The phenomenal world is a lie. Mm -hmm. It's illusion. It's fake news. Got it. So basically, our vasanas 
they're, they veil. So the world we perceive is They not only really veil, but they also create. Right. Both. So the vases create the world we see. Yes. Yes. Did you have a question that I always have? It's uh I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you speak up? Yeah, actually I'm not sure this is a good moment for this question. But uh, the question is that these, uh, you know, these ideas, uh, they seem very clear, right? And uh, one can, you know, see this uh, periodically. But uh, why is it uh, not irreversible? I mean, you know, the vasanas subside and then they arise again and then they subside and then they arise. What we're going to do, the way to deal with vasana is to remove the first element of it, which is non-apprehension of my self-nature. So let me see if I can give an example. Um, Now, you being a hippopotamus must be quite problematic. Do you have difficulty going through doorways? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Do you? And, and, and are you walking along the bottom of rivers and biting alligators? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> why, why is this not a problem for you? <laughs> Because you're not a hippopotamus. You see, the root of all that is a wrong idea of self. But and how you does are one get the right idea? We're also. working on that. We're working on that. For two things we need to do. In a quiet mind, with the attentive faculty introverted. Keep investigating. Who are you? What's your essential nature? And in terms of this world, start with the idea. Maybe it's not as solid and as real as I thought it was. Didn't we get the example of the katakana yeah. powder? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is called jnana abhyasa, the practice of knowledge. Because the deeply rooted conviction that I'm a person, that I'm my body, and all this is problematic, is just a habit. Let me give you a worldly example. So I have a student, she's Indian, and she has celiac disease. It's very rare in Indians. You all know what celiac disease is? Celiac disease is people who are highly sensitive to gluten. And all growing up for 25 years, stomach aches and all sorts of problems. And doctors thought she was crazy. You know, she was making it up. And she's, you know, it's all in her head and blah, 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 blah. Finally, she was tested. She found out she had celiac disease. Now, she loved donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and pasta <laughs> and bread. But then she saw the cause of her suffering. Okay, okay. Yeah. So in the beginning, yeah, it was tough giving up gluten. But once she got the Chomping down on gluten is going to make my stomach ache. She had the incentive to give it up. So when we begin to understand that the root of my suffering is this false identification, I begin to develop the desire to give it up. You have to give up two things. 
in Shankara's very famous text, The Crest Jewel of Discrimination. He has a very famous section called The Qualifications of a Fit Student. Becoming Adhikari. There are four. And we're only going to deal with the first two. Remember what the first one is. Viveka. Viveka. Rama Satyam Jagan Mithya Diete Rupa Vinishchayaha Soyam Nitya Anitya Vastu Viveka Samudharita. The firm conviction in the intellect. Brahman alone is real, and the phenomenal world is unreal, is known as discrimination between the real and the unreal. We start with that. Then the second, just as powerful, Vairavya, I haven't memorized that verse, I'm sorry. That desire. Don't achieve it overnight. To give up all attachments to enjoyments gained through the sense objects and that desire to let go of any personal sense of self, starting with the body up to and including Brahma, the creator, meaning I'm a powerful person, because me, I'm very special. All of them. And they feed on each other. They feed on each other. Why do we take up the practices of Viveka and Vairavya? Because I'm sick and tired of my suffering. I'm done. I'm done. Did you have a question back there, Pamela? No, I'm listening. That's the price tag. Now, we will gladly refund your misery if you don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to <laughs> knock yourself out. But there is real pain, physical pain. We'll put physical pain on, yeah, the, on the shelf. shelf. But that's not why most wanted, people yeah, I know you're not shoot themselves. About that, but I don't want people to think it's not real. And it isn't real in the end. Well, in the end, but yes. in, the, in the moment. And yogis, experienced meditators can experience pain and it shifts. Uh, share with us what some people go through when they experience pain on a long meditation retreat. You just got back from uh, you observe it, and uh, so there's the physical sensation, but you don't experience the mental sensation, which is wanting the pain to go away, and you just notice it, and then it goes away. Yeah. I have a beautiful story, may I? Uh, later. Maybe later, because okay. we're That's getting okay. behind on, on no our, we have to do 4.3 uh, shlokas a week, no, no, and no, I'm no, way no. behind. <laughs> All right, so next verse. This is which one? Verse 10. Yatha kasho hrishi kesho nano padhi gato vibhu tadde tadhi navadhati tannashe kevalo bhavet the all-pervading space appears to be diverse on account of its association with various conditionings, upadhis, which are different from each other. However, upon the destruction of these limiting adjuncts, the space becomes one. So also, the omnipresent truth appears to be diverse on account of its association with various upadhis and becomes one on the destruction of these upadhis. All right, so the doubt that he's addressing is that it feels like myself is inside my body. Most of us kind of have a sense that I'm kind of like a disembodied head, largely because most of our senses are in our head. But are you in the body or not? And one of the most Pardon me? 
Did someone say something? Okay. Uh, one of the, my favorite terms to point to the self comes from Yoga Vasishta, and it's Chidakasha, the space. Akasha means space or sky, consciousness itself. So what he's talking about is this. So there's room space and there's space inside the water glass. Now, if I move the water glass, does space move? If the water glass breaks, <gasps> the space in the glass has merged with the room space. Is how it really happens? The glass is in space. There's not space in the glass. I mean, that's not the right way to look at it. So if I have a vase, a bowl, a glass, space is just space. And when they're destroyed, what happens to the space? Nothing. Now, listen very carefully. Do you incarnate into a dream? No. Feels like it though. In the dream, it feels like I am inside my dream body. But upon awakening, you see, no, I wasn't in the dream. The dream was in me. Now, Krishna says this in the Gita. I think it's in the fourth chapter. He says, all oh, this is strung on me like manmi sutre, like gems on a thread. That's so nice. Krishna is everybody. But then much later, he says, well, actually, that's not true. I am not in them. They are in, they are in me. And they're not even really. Going back to your dream body. Are you in the dream body or is the dream body in you? And is it really in you? Do you keep it in the drawer of your nightstand at night? Dream body. No, it's not real. And it's only the vasanas that keep this going, isn't it? Habituated thinking, let's call it that. Deeply rooted habits of thinking. The reason I say that, like any habit, doesn't mean it's easy, but they are changeable. But we can have these radical shifts, psychic shifts, when we have a deep spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. So Shankara will say, just repeating, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am Brahman. Yeah. That's not it. We need to have aparoksha jnana, direct experience. Direct experience. So, the self in me, not my body, not my feelings, not my thoughts. When I look behind my eyes, there's just witnessing consciousness. And you are not your body. You are not your feelings. You are not your thoughts. When you look behind your eyes, there's just witnessing consciousness. The self in me is not like the self in you. The self in me is the self in you. It's just these little bodies moving around in it. The consciousness never moves. It is kutusta, still like a monk. Next verse. 
नानुपाधी वशा देव जाति वर्णाश्रमादय because of its association with different conditionings, upadhis, the idea of caste, color, position, and so on are superimposed upon the Atman, just as flavor, color, and so on are superimposed on water. Yes. So, you can make lemonade. What do you do to make lemonade? You take lemon juice and you put it in water. And then you take sugar and you put it in water. And you take the mint leaf and put it in the water. Put mint in your lemonade. I don't, no. You do? I don't. You don't, no. okay. <laughs> All it is is water plus flavorings. So you can do any other kind of flavored water. Mango water, blueberry water. So also, it seems like I am male, I am female, I'm old, I'm young, I belong to this caste. I'm this cultural background. I have this education. I have this problem. I have PTSD. I came from a loving home. All these I am fill in the blank. Again. We superimpose the qualities of the upadis, as the word Shankar has given us. It means the equipment, the conditions, and their status on the self. The self has no qualities. Now, we talked about this, I hope we did, at the very first lesson. If, as we study this work, we talk about the self as an idea, what do you think about the self? What do you think about the self? Well, I think the self is this. Well, I think the self is that. That will do nothing to free us. That gives us, at best, a little bit of intellectual joy. We have to start with a direct experience. Who sees the phone? You see the phone? Yeah. That's yourself. You're not going to get another self. My problem is not that I don't know the self. My problem is I in superimpose all sorts of stupid ideas on the self. And so we need to discard all these ideas. Listen carefully. We're not taking a bad self and making it into a good self. I'm not taking a vicious self and making it a virtuous self. I'm not taking low self-esteem and try to have high self-esteem. What are you? Jivananda Rupam, Shivoham, Shivoham. I'm of the form of bliss, consciousness. I am Shiva, meaning I am him. Not any kind of bliss. All right, next verse. Which number are we on now? This is 12. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, you, okay, we're just doing fine. Going <laughs> <laughs> a little faster. Panchi Kritam Aha Bhuta Sambhavam Karma Sanjitam 
शरीरम सुखु दुखाना भोगा यत न मुच्चते determined for each individual by their own past actions and made of the five elements that have gone through the process of fivefold self division and mutual combination panchi karana is born the gross body the medium through which pleasure and pain are experienced the tenement of experiences all right so this is a, one of the places where i depart from swamiji if you look in the book You'll see his funny little looks like a Pac-Man chart to me about the panchakaran and the fivefold division and subsequent recombination of the panmatras: earth, air, fire, water, and ether or space. This is much easier to grasp if we really go to the Vedantic or yogic understanding of perception itself. Earth is something's smellability. Air is something's touchability. Fire is something's seeability. Water is something's tasteability. And space. Is something's hearability. Let me see if we can see the distinction here. So I would look at these ton mantras, earth, air, fire, water, or ether, and say, "Ah, oh, the ancients just didn't know their science." You know, they, you know that's not true. Those aren't elements. Iron is an element. Helium is an element. Oxygen is an element. That's not what they're really saying. For example, let's look at the coffee table. What is the coffee table made of? Wood. Mm -hmm. Wood. What's wood made of? Water, air, and cellulose mostly. And cellulose is mostly what? Carbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Knock on it. That's hard wood. Well, now, what if we're dreaming right now? <laughs> if we're dreaming right now, what's the table made of? Dream stuff. <laughs> Seeability, hearability, smellability, tasteability, touchability, in various combinations. Yeah. You see. Mm -hmm. That's the deep mystical meaning of the tan mantras, the, the elements. So, what's the difference between the coffee table of a dream and that coffee table? Vibration. A subtle world is a finer vibration. The waking state world is a grosser vibration. By vibration, I mean the high notes on the piano versus the low notes on the piano. Steam is subtler than water, which is subtler than ice. Ice is grosser than water. Water is grosser than steam. It's vibrational. That's the only difference between the world of imagination and that table. So what the ancients were saying is again, sarvam kovidam brahma. All this is verily brahma. And what makes it appear as the various names and forms are the various combinations of seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, which are the way a human. Perceives the world. Other animals have different senses. So that's what the gross world is. That's what the gross body is, and it is through this gross body that we make contact with the gross physical 
world, which again is nothing but consciousness. It's nothing but vibration held together by thought. It's just a denser vibration. So don't worry about Swamiji's little Pac-Man chart. I, I've never found it helpful. <laughs> All right, we have to stop there. And so what verse are we on for next week? Uh, verse 13. Okay, you're a little behind. Come on. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti, Hari Om, Sri Guru Om Namaha, Hari Om.